Wait, what? Oh, okay. Don't shoot! I'm out of ammo! Frog blast the vent core! Frog blast the vent core! Frog blast the vent core! To say that Mega Man was a popular series for the NES or Super Nintendo would be an understatement. Ask any old school Nintendo fan what their favorite 8 and 16 bit games are, and the Mega Man games are likely to rank pretty high on that list. And even though this series carried on to the following console generation, it never managed to quite achieve the same level of success as the earlier entries. Personally, I loved Mega Man X4 and the Legend series, but it was pretty clear that Mega Man's popularity was starting to waver, which only got worse as the PS2 rolled around. By that point, the Mega Man franchise had mostly been relegated to handhelds. But what you may not know is that while all of this was going on, there was another Mega Man game being created in China. And uh, yes, it's a bootleg game. So, I guess I'm gonna need this again. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to Zook Hero Z. Yes, this is a completely original Mega Man game, developed without Capcom's or Nintendo's consent. And although it was created in China, we do know that the game received a worldwide release, as you could find English and even Japanese versions of the game. Though as far as I know, the only English dump of the game has a game-breaking issue, which will always cause it to crash. So sadly, I had to stick with the Japanese dump of this one. Which is a shame, because this game has a surprisingly high amount of cutscenes. The packaging is also interesting in how normal it looks. Usually you can spot a bootleg miles away due to their oddly shaped boxes, art or cartridge design. But this one? No, it all looks pretty normal. I mean, sure, it's obviously using official Mega Man art, except they replaced the series' name with Zook. But besides that, it looks normal enough to fool most kids into thinking that this was an official release. But honestly, even if you did buy this game thinking that it was an official release, I don't think you'd be disappointed, because this game is legitimately good. Anyway, booting up the game, you're shown an intro telling you the game's plot. You play as Luke, a highly decorated detective who was shot and gravely wounded when trying to stop Dr. Mean and his robot army from taking over the world. Luckily, the government has a secret cyborg project run by Dr. Stevens, so they were able to save Luke and turn him into a cyborg, becoming Zook Hero Z. Actually, funny thing, even though this series is known as Zook in the West, in its original language the series is named after the main character Luke, so it's possible that the Zook name was either a new addition or a mistranslation. Anyway, the first thing I gotta say about Zook is that this game looks the part. I mean, just look at it! If you saw someone playing this on a Game Boy Color, you'd think this was an official Mega Man title. Now, you're most likely thinking that they stole all of the art assets from other Mega Man games, namely Mega Man Extreme. But again, no, a large portion of the assets here are completely new. I mean, yes, you do see some sprites or backgrounds that were taken from the original Game Boy or Game Boy Color games. But for the most part, all of the assets here are new. If you compare Zook's design with that of the Game Boy Mega Man games or the Extreme series, you can definitely notice the similarities, but it also becomes apparent that these are not sprite edits. And in fact, most of the game was made from scratch, as the game engine was also internally developed by the bootleggers. They could have just stolen any of Capcom's Mega Man engines for the Game Boy, but instead they chose to create their own. The only exception here was the sound engine, which uses the Game Boy Mega Man 5 sound engine and sound effects. But the music itself, as far as I know, is completely original. I'm honestly really impressed by the developers. It would have been so easy to just take any old Game Boy game, 
slap a Mega Man sprite on it and call it a day. But no, that's not what they did. They clearly went the extra mile and I respect them for it. In fact, the more you play this game, the more you realize that Vast Fame, the team behind this game, were Mega Man fans. Not only were they able to properly recreate the aesthetics of the 8-bit games, but as you play it, you'll soon find out that a lot of the Mega Man traditions made it into this game. For example, Zook seems to merge the gameplay elements and aesthetics of the original Mega Man series and the X series. So Zook can slide like in the original games, but he also has a dash boost and wall jump like the X games. Although the wall jump is a bit finicky and definitely not as responsive as the official Mega Man X titles. You have 6 robot masters to fight and defeating them will allow you to use their weapon. Some of which are inspired by the Mega Man games while others seem to be original weapons. Hidden throughout the levels you'll also find armor upgrades, similar to Dr. Light's upgrades in Mega Man X. You must recover all the energy immediately, Mega Man. What? That's a good question. And yes, all of these weapons and upgrades are persistent and can be accessed through the menu. And guess what? If you get the Zook Buster upgrade, you can also charge the weapons that you unlocked from the Robot Masters for a more powerful blast. Again, just like Mega Man X. And, once you beat all Robot Masters, you'll then invade Dr. Minz's fortress, which has several levels and culminates in a boss rush room. And, after you beat the fortress, a second fortress appears with more levels, which then ends in a two-part boss battle against Dr. Mean. And, the music is legitimately good and sounds like something that could have come out from an official Mega Man game. Here, just take a listen. This game is incredible! The amount of dedication and love put into it is insane. I mean, this was developed without any official tools or support from Capcom or Nintendo. They basically had to play the official games and then reproduce that to their own bootleg game. But it does have some issues. The first problem are the controls. Although they try to mimic Mega Man's controls, there is a slight input delay. You can't really tell in this video, and it's not game breaking or anything, but if the Mega Man controls are second nature to you, then this will likely trip you up. The best way to approach the controls is to remind yourself that this is not in fact Mega Man, and that there will be a slight delay in your actions. Additionally, the wall jumping is super finicky and nowhere near as responsive as it is in the official X games. The game also suffers from a ton of slowdown, not helped by this explosion effect that happens whenever you take down an enemy. Which to be fair, the effect looks really cool, but it will slow down the game. Additionally, there is one instance in this game where it felt like it was required to get the armor upgrade for your boots, but there's a good chance that you might not have them. Basically, once you take down half of all robot masters, you're thrown into a special level before being allowed to progress. The problem is that there's a jump here that requires you to have the boots. There is a way around it by hurting yourself first and then using the spikes below as a jumping platform. But it is a pretty cheap way of doing things. I also feel some levels are a bit too long or rely too much on one hit kills. Another odd thing I noticed is that the item drops in this game are super generous. It feels like every other enemy you kill will drop a 1-up, a knee tank or just a regular healing item. Because of this, it's actually quite easy to find a good grinding spot and grind for lives and the tanks that you can then activate using your in-game menu, making this game super easy. But this does not stop Zook from being a good game. And I don't mean that by bootleg standards, no. Zook is a legitimately good game. But what's even more impressive is that this is a series. So that's right, we have three more games to check out.
Zook Hero Z was then followed by Zook Hero 2. And sadly, this one's a bit of a downgrade. For starters, there are no cutscenes besides the intro and no plot to speak of. You don't even get to see Dr. Mean this time. All we know is that you're Zook, there are some robots and you have to fight them. The game controls exactly the same as the first one. But sadly, the level design took a nosedive here. For starters, you'll find plenty of mid-level bosses with attacks that are frankly undodgeable and that you can only beat them by brute forcing your way through. So do remember to stock up on those Z-Tanks. Additionally, you'll often run into enemies that create unending lines of fire, meaning that once again, you have no way of dodging them. You still get new weapons by defeating Robot Masters as well as the armor upgrades. But honestly, with one or two exceptions, the weapons weren't that interesting this time around. Not helped by the fact that the Robot Masters have no weaknesses this time. Yes, they all take the same damage from all of your weapons. Basically, your Zook Buster causes 1 point of damage, and your other weapons, 2 points. And that's it! Oh, and remember how Dr. Mean had 2 fortresses that you had to go through? Yeah, there's none of that here. Now, once you beat all Robot Masters, you go straight to the boss rush level, followed by the final stage, and that's it! Even the music isn't as good this time around. I mean, sure, not every song in the first Zook game was a winner, but it was generally a pretty good soundtrack. And while this one isn't offensive or anything, it's definitely a step down. I mean, don't get me wrong, at the end of the day, this is still one of the better bootlegs out there, and a decent game in its own right. But it definitely feels sloppier than the first one, and has quite a bit more of that bootleg jank that we're so familiar with. I do at least like how Zook was given a redesign so as to set him apart from Mega Man. I don't know, maybe their heart wasn't in it, because this game was a clear downgrade from the first one. But we're not done yet, because now we've got spin-offs. That's right, you heard me. Up until now, the Zook games were developed by Vast Fame, an unlicensed developer housed in Taiwan. But they also had ties with our good friends at Syntax. If that name seems familiar, it's because they're the same team behind that Metal Gear 2 beat-em-up, as well as that horrible Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for the Game Boy Advance. And they would end up developing not one, but two spin-offs based on the Zook series. That's right, this is a bootleg of a bootleg, just think about that for a second. Okay, maybe I'm being a bit mean. Like I said before, both studios had ties with each other, so it's possible that these were official spin-offs. But sadly, there's no way of knowing that. Anyway, the names of these games often change depending on who you ask, but I'll be using handheld underground's naming conventions, and call them Rock Hero Legend 3 and 5, though sadly, only Rock Hero Legend 5 was dumped, so that's the one we'll be taking a look at. Well, this is certainly different. Yes, that's right. This is not a Mega Man game, but instead a Castlevania game. Some of you might be familiar with another Syntax bootleg called Castlevania DX, whose demo has been floating around the internet for years now, but the full game itself was never dumped. Well, Castlevania DX was actually a revised edition of Syntax's Castlevania game titled... Uh... This... And that original version actually has been dumped. And that game was re-released yet again as a Zook game, except this time you play as Zero. Yeah, I know, it's a bit confusing, but for better or worse, the bootleg market is filled with relaunches and re-editions where they only change a couple of minor things like the name, the title screen, or if you're really lucky, a couple of enemy sprites. So let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. This game is super janky. Out of all three Zook games that we've taken a look at so far, this is by far the jankiest. The scrolling and movement is pretty choppy, and I would often pass through walls only to then get stuck in them. 
Also, seeing as how the game changes your player character sprite with a new one that looks like Zero, the hit detection while airborne is super weird, as you need to connect the hit with your enemies way lower than where your sword actually is. Also, the plot is nearly non-existent. You get a short intro saying that there's a virus threatening humanity and that you're off to save it. That's it. So from what I described, at first glance this looks like a terrible game, doesn't it? Well, it's really not, because this game is surprisingly ambitious for the system. This is a full-blown Metroidvania. Do you like the Game Boy Advance Metroidvanias? Then you might like this game, because that's exactly what Syntex was aiming for. Every time you dispatch an enemy, you gain experience. Build enough experience and you level up, which will then increase your attack and defense. Enemies will also occasionally drop items. These can be single-use items like healing, mana potions or I guess SP potions in this case, or even antidotes. You can also collect money from killing enemies or destroying torches, which can then be used to buy items from the shopkeepers. Oh, but we're still not done! Enemies will also drop gear that you can equip to increase your attack or defense. And as you explore the game, you'll come across permanent upgrades that will let you explore new areas. So for example, you can unlock the double jump pretty early into the game, which lets you reach higher areas, as well as a slide move, which can be used to both damage and escape enemies, as well as reach new areas. And if you ever get lost, you can just bring up a map that tells you where you are and how many entrances there are for each section of the game you've been to. So the idea is to explore each section of the game until you find one of several boss doors. Then you gotta find the keys to open said doors, fight the bosses and carry on forward. The music seems to have all been taken from Castlevania 2 for the Game Boy. So while none of it is original, it is at least spectacular. You'll also notice that the enemies either seem like Mega Man foes or Castlevania foes, meaning that they did redesign some of them, but not all of them. I do like how they took the enemy designs from Mega Man Zero and attempted to reproduce them for the Game Boy Color. That is pretty cool. Yes, this game is janky, but once again, the level of ambition here is insane. And the craziest thing is that they actually pulled it off. This game is incredibly fun to play. The difficulty is pretty high, but if you grind for a bit, it does become considerably easier. As yes, your level and the gear you're using will make a difference. Of course, the game is all in Mandarin, so you'll have to fumble your way through the menus a bit, but luckily it's nothing too difficult. Though instead of playing the Zook version of this game, I'd recommend the original Castlevania release. Yes, the choppy scrolling and movement is still there, but the hit detection is much better with this one and I never had any issues with falling through walls. Yes, this game is pretty janky, but it's honestly incredible in how ambitious it is, and for the most part, they pulled it off. But now, we have yet another Zook game to take a look at, and this time, Zook goes 32-bit. Vast fame would return to create a final Zook game, this time for the Game Boy Advance, under the name Network Rockman Crystal or Rockman and Crystal, or Zookman ZX4, depending on which card you have. In this case, I'll be playing the English release. I was really excited to play this one, as I was hoping it would be a return to form for vast fame, and that they would be able to put out something on the level of the quality of the first Zook game. But sadly, this is the worst one of all. Up until now, I've been enjoying all of the Zook games. Sure, Zook 2 was a step down from the first game, and the Metroidvania 1 was pretty janky, but they were still fun games that only required a bit of more polish. But with this one, we're in full-blown bootleg territory. If nothing else, I do at least like that Zook has finally been given his own design, that is completely distinct from his Mega Man roots. I mean, he still looks like he could be a character from the Mega Man series, but he does at least look distinct from Capcom's mascot. 
You might also notice that this game rips a lot more sprites and backgrounds from the official titles than any of the previous Zook games we've taken a look at. We still have a few original bosses and enemies, but a lot of what you see has been lifted straight from Mega Man 8, Mega Man and Base or Mega Man X. Although, Zook's design and moveset is much closer to Mega Man X this time around. There are also no cutscenes or plot to speak of in this game. And every time you face against a boss, they'll exchange a few lines of English with you, with some top tier banger insults like I want you of great danger or go to die. Oh, also, this time you actually have 8 robot masters to contend with instead of the usual 6 from previous Zook games. And you once again collect their weapon after defeating them. And to the game's credit, some of the weapons are pretty useful, especially if you look for the armor upgrades as well and collect the Zook Buster upgrade, allowing you to once again charge a shot for your alternate weapons. I especially like the bubble weapon, which forms a shield around you that makes you invulnerable to all enemy attacks, essentially making you invincible for a few seconds. You also get this mace weapon which once upgraded creates a giant ball that keeps spinning against the screen, which is great against bosses. I mean, so far, this game sounds pretty good, right? Well, unfortunately, it's completely undone by the controls. The first two Zook games had a bit of an input delay, but nothing too serious. This game is the exact opposite. The controls are super slippery. It always seems like you move too fast, you fall too fast, you jump too fast and the same goes for the enemies. It does not help that all the enemies respawn as soon as they leave the screen, so you're under a constant barrage which can make it pretty hard to dodge. Honestly, I just don't get this at all. Vast Fame had such a good handle on what made a good Mega Man game on the Game Boy Color, especially with the first Zook game. But here, it's like they weren't even trying. I mean, you have two levels in which Zook gets in a vehicle, turning that portion of the stage into a shmup. The issue is, your ship doesn't move diagonally, so if you need to move diagonally up, for example, you need to first press forward and then once you're at the horizontal point you want to be, you then press up to move vertically. I just do not get why it plays like this. But the worst part? Oh man, the worst part has got to be the wall jump. I mean, it was already a bit finicky on the Game Boy Color games, but here it's near impossible to get it right. Zook doesn't grab to the wall automatically, it usually needs a split second to do it, which always throws me off. But then he also slides too fast, so it's really easy to miss that split second chance you have for a wall jump. There are some parts where you have to use the wall jump to progress, and those were without fail the parts where I always died the most. I mean, even if you get the wall jump timing right, your jump and movement is so fast that you can easily die because you over jumped and went too far, or under jumped trying to correct yourself. Oh, and then there's the bosses. Oh boy, the bosses. <sighs> I missed you, old friend. See, you might notice that your health bar in this game is pretty small. This was something where they clearly drew inspiration from Mega Man X. But the difference is that X would find permanent health upgrades which made him stronger. In Zook, there's none of that. What you see is what you get. But when I hear you ask, the bosses also have an equally low health bar, so that means it's fair, right? No, no it doesn't. Because you see, every bar on their health bar takes at least 3 hits to be taken down. Now multiply that by all the bars on their health bar and the fact bosses get a grace period when they're hit and you're in for some long boss battles. Not to mention of course their high speed and your slippery controls will make everything even more difficult. And even if you charge up your Zook Buster, the powered up shot will count the same as a regular shot, so there's no reason to use it against bosses. And the bosses are also not weak against any of the weapons you unlock, though thankfully the unlocked weapons will cause a bit more damage than your Zook Buster. But regardless, these battles will still take a long time, not to mention your secondary weapon ammo will run out before then. 
The best way I found to beat the bosses is to grind for E tanks and weapon tanks. And then spending the entire battle while jumping on the corner and only coming down when you know it's safe to throw a cheap hit. Once you do get the Zook Buster upgrade, you can use a few weapons that don't require you to go down to hit the bosses. But that's pretty much it. But despite that, I was able to persevere and defeated all 8 Robot Masters. And I was hoping we'd at least see a return of Dr. Mean and his fortress. But sadly, no. Once you beat the Robot Masters, you unlock a new level, which is essentially just a glorified boss rush. And once you beat that, the game is over. Yeah, that's right! There's no ending or even final boss. The game is simply over. Man, what a sad way to go. The Zook series began so strong, but it feels that with each progressive release, they just kept getting worse. But hey, 3 out of 4 ain't bad, and the first Zook game is still incredible. In the end, the Zook series is still incredible for what it is. Especially when you consider that these are all bootleg games developed without any official tools. I mean, honestly, I'm still shocked at how good the first Zook game is. And while the sequel is a downgrade, it's still a pretty decent game. And the Castlevania game, while janky, is really ambitious and fun. Especially if you, you know, actually play the Castlevania version. Now, if you want to play these games, your best bet is to check out the Handheld Underground website which is dedicated to preserving bootleg games for the Game Boy systems. So, in the end, I'm pretty happy that these games are out there and I think it's about time that Zook got some much-deserved recognition. So, if you're a Mega Man fan, do yourself a favor and go check out this unique alternate reality version of the Capcom series. You might just be pleasantly surprised. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Stickage Retro Corner. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell and share this video. All that fun social media stuff. And you can also support me on Patreon. It may not seem like it, but even one dollar is a really big help in keeping this channel going. I'd also like to thank my newest Patreon supporters, Jerry Langwell and Francisco Gomes. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye!